Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back. This video we are going to be talking about multi-file compilation and how to take a file with all the code defined in one location, how to split that up into multiple files and get it to work somehow still. <laughs> so make sure you watch the previous video if you need the behind the scenes conceptual stuff on how this works. This video is gonna be more hands-on if you need a little bit more background, that's the video for you. You know what else is for you though? <laughs> that's right, Embarcadero Rad Studio, our sponsor for this series. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy it to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. All right, so first thing I did was I separated our code into two folders, basically this one called math, which is where we're going to put all of our files for this video, and then this other folder which contained all of our previous files. That's just a little bit for mental clarity so we don't have to look at all that junk. The other thing is I changed into the math directory. So the way I did that is just CD math, and then it brought me into that math folder. And when you say ls, this is how you can see the files in that folder, or you can just look up here in this folder right here. All right, so first things first, when you create multiple files, it's a lot of steps, it's really confusing, and can take some practice. So we're just gonna try our best and do this one step at a time. So first thing in here, you'll notice we have this main function, and then we have a series of other functions that have been defined in this file. So these functions, have the declaration and the definition in one spot. And that's totally fine. Oftentimes when these are split up across multiple files, the declaration and the definition will be in two separate spots. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take all of these functions besides main, we're gonna leave main in this file, and we're going to cut them. And there's accidentally two IO streams here, we don't want that, so delete one of those. So one IO stream should be inside of this mathstuff.cpp. Now we're going to create a new file. So click this new file button and we're gonna call this mathutils.cpp. So this is going to be another C++ file, paste everything in there and you will want to make sure that if any of your functions are outputting to the console that you include IO stream or do any other includes that are required for these, this code to work. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create what's known as a header file and it's going to be very similar. It's gonna have the same name, mathutils.h and this is kind of the interface to working with this code. So we're going to paste everything in here as well, but what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all of the bodies, <laughs> gets me every time, and then replace them with semicolons. So yes, just keep doing this, go through the process to clear up this code. So now we're just going to have the declarations for the functions in here, and the struct will stay here as well. In the C++ file, mathutils, we can get rid of the struct that usually will stay in the header file. So now all we do is have the function definitions, and the only other thing is one of our function definitions uses a default value. You don't wanna do this for the function definitions, you only want that for the declaration. So we're gonna get rid of that and just leave that int pow. Inside of the header file, that's still going to be there, so int pow equals two, it's still going to work the way we expect. Now what we're going to do is in both of the C++ files, we're going to include this header file. So go back to the main and say include, and in double quotes say math underscore utils dot h. Now the reason we're using double quotes is because that will search in the current directory, which is where that header file is defined. Inside of the math utils cpp file, we're going to do the same thing. So open that, scroll to the top, and make sure to include that file. Now we wanna be careful we don't include the same file twice, and there is a protection against that, so inside of the header file, we can use what's known as a directive, and just say if ndef, which says if not defined, and then make some name up, we can say math underscore utils, then what we're going to do, if it's not defined, we're going to define it. So we just say define math utils. And then at the end, you can end that if statement by saying end if. So that's just a little bit of the preprocessor directives which will be processed before the code is compiled, which will prevent us from including this code twice. Now, how exactly do we compile this? 
I think we got everything right, but I may have missed something. So to check, we can compile and see if the code works the way we expect. So G++, and then you just put the names of the C++ files. So math stuff dot cpp, math utils dot cpp. And note that these are both in the same command. That'll give us one output using these two files, and it will appear as a dot out. And then we can run that, and voila, we get the same output we originally got when we created this code. So here's how it's working. Inside of math stuff .cpp, we have this main, which is calling this power function, which comes from the header file and is defined in the math utils cpp file. So going there, we can find that power function, and voila, here it is. Having your files split up like this can be confusing, so just make sure you're paying really close attention to where things are defined. Generally, the function definitions will be in the math utils, the declarations in the header file, as well as default arguments, and any data types such as structs. Then you will have one file which will just have the main function and the general flow for the program. So we're basically creating a utility file, mathutils, mathutils.h. Then we can use that inside of our mathstuff.cpp and treat it as if it's just a bunch of functions made available to us. Now there is another option that you guys should know about when it comes to compiling, and that's going to look like this. If you go up to the previous statement and we add another flag in here, hyphen C, what this is going to do is it's going to produce two new files, mathstuff.o and mathutils.o. These are known as object files. When you open them, it's nothing that you could really read. It's just a bunch of jargon. <laughs> this is compiled C++ code, and this is another option that you can use. Then, if you want to compile using this object code, it would look like this, mathstuff.o mathutils.o and you can see we can compile just the same way and execute our program. So when would you want to compile using cpp versus .o? Well it depends on what you're trying to use your library for. If it's a library you're trying to distribute but you want the source code itself hidden then you would want to use the .o files. If you're creating an open source project and you want people to be able to get the original source code, then you might distribute the CPP files. Which to use is totally up to you. Most of the time you can just compile directly from the CPP files and you don't have to worry about the intermediate step of creating the O file. But when it comes to distributing a library, you're probably going to be distributing the .o file. .o files are also going to come up when we go into make files, which we're actually going to be talking about in the next couple videos. So be sure to check those out because make files are huge. It's basically a way we can automate the compilation process, save us time, make it super awesome. So be sure to subscribe and check that out. I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to learn about the concepts of make files.